the North Hollywood shootout involved a standoff between two armed bank robbers and the Los Angeles Police Department. Larry Phillips Jr. and Emil Matasarianu aimed to steal approximately $750,000 from a bank. Equipped with heavy body armor from head to toe and armed with fully automatic rifles, their plan quickly fell apart when an LAPD patrol unit spotted them entering the bank. This sighting prompted an immediate request for additional police support, leading to a 44-minute firefight that would be recorded as one of the most intense in U.S. history. Larry Phillips, known as Larry Warfel at birth, was born in Los Angeles, California to parents Larry Phillips Sr. and Dorothy Clay. His father, who had a history of legal troubles, escaped from the Colorado State Hospital on April 18, 1969, having been committed there the year before for undisclosed reasons. The Phillips family seemed typical and stable, yet the elder Phillips' involvement in minor criminal activities impacted his son's upbringing. The family split, with Phillips and his mother relocating to Kiowa, Colorado, while his father remained as a painter. On September 22, 1976, two days after Phillips turned six, he saw his father get apprehended by federal agents following a possible tip-off from Dorothy Clay. This arrest is believed to have significantly influenced Phillips' character, as suggested by his father. Following Phillips Sr.'s release from a several month jail term, Dorothy divorced him and returned with Phillips to California. Larry Phillips Sr. remained active in his son's life, sharing activities like shooting range visits, wrestling events, and trips to the Rocky Mountains. It was during these mountain trips that he expressed his distaste for law enforcement, potentially influencing Phillips' future choices. In 1983, after quitting school post ninth grade, Phillips pursued his ambition of wealth. He met Sharon Santos in 1984, and they later wed. Phillips developed a passion for bodybuilding, aspiring to emulate Arnold Schwarzenegger or Lou Ferrigno, and joined Gold's Gym for five years. He was also drawn to Tom Vu's Get Rich Quick infomercials. On September 2, 1989, Phillips mirrored his father's actions, getting arrested for stealing suits from Sears and Alhambra and facing trial. That year, Sharon Santos was pregnant with his child. Later at Gold's Gym, Phillips befriended Matasarianu, who shared his interest in bodybuilding and weightlifting. In September 1992, Phillips traveled to Colorado and devised a fraudulent real estate scheme. Posing as Mark Wright, he contacted real estate agents and inspected over 50 properties. He would observe and memorize the combination of the lock boxes containing the house keys during these visits. After acquiring a property, Phillips would quickly resell it, falsely advertising it as available for rent. On October 6th, using his alias, he met Cheryl Meyer, who responded to an ad in the Rocky Mountain News for a rental property at 1708 South Bryant Street. Meyer applied to rent the property and was approved by Phillips. However, when Meyer and her husband visited the house, they were informed by the actual owner that it was for sale, not rent, and listed by Remax. The Meyers reached out to a real estate agent, discovering the scam, and were advised to meet Phillips for a supposed lease deposit handover while also alerting the police. The next day, with undercover Detective Hogan's assistance, Phillips was apprehended at the meeting. His real identity was later uncovered through the car he used for the scam, a black Nissan 240SX, registered to his late mother, Dorothy Clay. Initially held on a $1 million bail, Phillips was released after his wife, Sharon, withdrew 10,000 from her savings, reducing the bail. The heiress put a strain on Phillips' marriage due to financial worries, fear of raising their two children alone, and suspicions of infidelity. Ultimately, Phillips left his home and went on the run, ironically mirroring his father's life. He sought refuge with Matasarianu and started traveling. 
Decibel Stefan Emilian Matasarianu, originally from Timisoara, Romania, was a heavyset child who often struggled with headaches due to epilepsy. His parents, Viarel, a political dissident, and Valerie, possibly affiliated with the state opera, relocated to the United States in 1974 to escape the challenging regime of Nicolae Ceausescu in Romania. Settling in Los Angeles, California, the family quickly adapted to their new, spacious home, which captivated Matasarianu. However, he faced bullying in school over his accent and weight, driving him to find comfort in computers and staying indoors. At 16, he helped his mother, Valari, obtain a license for state care of developmentally disabled adults. Around this time, he began to form a small group of friends. The family's stability was rocked by escalating conflicts between his parents, leading to a divorce that triggered a series of arrests and financial troubles, ultimately resulting in the suspension of his mother's state care license. In 1983, he attended the DeVry Institute of Technology, pursuing a three-year electronics engineering program. In 1987, after earning his electronics degree, Matasarianu started his own business, though its initial success was unclear. He developed an interest in firearms, often seen cleaning them by his neighbors. The ongoing conflict between his parents didn't seem to directly impact Emil, but he felt the strain, particularly with VRL, urging him to further his education. His frustration manifested in aggressive behavior, including a threatening incident with a chainsaw against a neighbor. In 1989, Matasarianu befriended Phillips at Gold's Gym, bonding over their shared interest in fitness. He later harbored Phillips, who was fleeing from legal troubles. The two began a period of travel together. In 1993, during a trip to Romania, Matasarianu met Cristina, who would become his wife and mother of his son. The family settled in a rented multi-story house in Roland Heights, Los Angeles financed by Matasarianu's joint ventures with Phillips. However, in 1996, Matasarianu's wife and son left him. During their travels, Phillips and Matasarianu committed an armed robbery of a First Bank armored vehicle in Littleton, Colorado on July 20, 1993, without causing any casualties. Later, on October 23, 1993, in Glendale, California, they quickly sped away from a gas station in a newly rented Red Ford Thunderbird, attracting the attention of Sergeant Ian Grimes. Grimes stopped them, and when asked for his license, Phillips claimed he had left it at home, while Matasarianu falsely stated the car was owned by Phillips's mother. Grimes, aware of the car's rental status, ordered them out and discovered they were both carrying Glock 17 pistols. A search of the Thunderbird revealed various firearms and ammunition, including a Polytech rifle and a Norinco Mac 90 rifle, pistols, over a thousand rounds of ammunition, smoke bombs, explosives, a gas mask, body armor, scanners, disguises, and $1,600 in cash. It's speculated that their high-speed departure was to reach a safe house to store these items. The two were apprehended and identified via DNA fingerprinting. On October 26th, Phillips faced charges of conspiracy to commit robbery, grand theft auto, illegal weapon activities, possession of a loaded firearm, and perjury, while Matasarianu was charged with conspiracy to commit robbery, grand theft auto, illegal weapon activities, and carrying a loaded firearm in a vehicle. At a November 8th, preliminary hearing, the grand theft auto and Phillips perjury charges were dropped due to insufficient evidence. In December, they were sentenced to 99 and 71 days in jail, plus 36 days of probation each. Both served their sentences and were released. On July 14, 1995, in Los Angeles, they robbed a Brinks armored car at 12.25 p.m., resulting in the death of security guard Herman Dwight Cook and injury to driver Felipe Cortez. On March 27, 1996, a Brinks armored car was attacked, possibly by Phillips and Matasarianu, 
with the driver sustaining minor injuries. They escalated their criminal activities on May 2nd, 1996, robbing a Bank of America in Van Nuys and fleeing with over $750,000. On May 31st, they robbed another Bank of America, obtaining $794,000, but injuring two tellers. Their plan was flawed, as they expected $2 million, but found less due to recent security changes. This robbery foreshadowed the upcoming North Hollywood incident. On February 28, 1997, Phillips and Matasarianu carried out the notorious bank heist that made them infamous nationwide. They arrived at the Bank of America on 6600 Laurel Canyon Boulevard in a white-sprayed 1987 Chevrolet Celebrity. At 9.17 a.m., after ingesting phenobarbital to steady their nerves, they approached the bank, each armed with a Norinco Type 56 Sporter rifle and clad in bulletproof vests. Nearby patrolling officers, Lauren Farrell and Martin Perello, noticed the armed duo and issued an alert for an armed robbery. Taking cover behind a semi-truck, Farrell and Perello watched as the robbers coerced Armin Iskaudarian, who was using the ATM, into the bank at gunpoint. Once inside, Phillips and Matasarianu began their heist, firing shots inside the bank to intimidate everyone present. Outside the bank, Farrell issued a shots fired call and requested additional officer support around the bank's perimeter. Inside, Phillips and Matasarianu faced challenges in quickly accessing the money due to recent security upgrades. These measures included money being stored in separate lockable boxes and irregular delivery schedules by Bank of America, resulting in less cash than they anticipated at the Laurel Canyon branch. They managed to leave with just over $300,000 and three die packs inadvertently included by the assistant bank manager. At 9.24 a.m., Phillips emerged from the bank and immediately engaged in gunfire. Spotting Sergeant Haynes and Officer Whitfield, along with three civilians approximately 200 feet away, he unleashed a barrage of bullets from his assault rifle at the police cruisers, heavily damaging them. Phillips continued his rampant shooting for several minutes. He also shot at an LAPD helicopter, monitoring the scene, forcing it to ascend to a higher altitude for safety. The officer's pistols and Officer Zborovan's shotgun were ineffective against Phillips' body armor. The arrival of SWAT officers prompted Phillips to retreat into the bank momentarily before reappearing with Matasarianu, both carrying a bag filled with the stolen money. The die packs in the bag detonated, spoiling the money and stopping Phillips and Matasarianu's plans for a successful robbery. In response, they initiated their escape, firing at both police officers and civilians. This assault resulted in injuries to Officer Guy, civilian Tracy Fisher, and additional wounds to Officer Whitfield and Sergeant Haynes. As they headed back to their Chevrolet celebrity to flee, Matasarianu sustained gunshot wounds to his right buttock and left forearm. Phillips responded by shooting at a group of police officers trying to outflank them from a backyard on Archwood Street, causing Detective Earl Valadares to be seriously injured by shrapnel. While Matasarianu got into the Chevrolet and started it, Phillips provided covering fire using a Heckler & Koch M91A3 semi-automatic rifle. However, the rifle was soon damaged by police gunfire, impacting its functionality, and Phillips himself was hit in the shoulder. After a brief attempt to continue firing one-handed, he switched to a Norinco Type 56 S1 assault rifle, which jammed a few times. Compounded by the disorienting effects of the phenobarbital, Phillips found himself increasingly confused and uncoordinated. When his assault rifle became permanently jammed, Phillips switched to using a 9mm Beretta Model 92FS semi-automatic pistol. In the next exchange of gunfire, Phillips sustained a gunshot wound to his right hand, causing him to drop the pistol. After retrieving it, he ended his own life with a shot to the chin. As he collapsed, Additional police gunfire hit him in his spine. There was speculation that Phillips' suicide might have been accidental, occurring while he attempted to reload the pistol single-handedly, but this was never confirmed. 
At this point, Matasarianu, driving on Archwood Street, decided to abandon the Chevrolet, which had two flat tires and a bullet-ridden windshield from police gunfire. He attempted to hijack a red Ford Tempo, shooting at its driver, who fortunately escaped without injury. Matasaranu then encountered a group of vehicles and confronted aerospace engineer Bill Marr, who was rerouting to Archwood Street in his 1963 Jeep Cherokee pickup due to a police blockade while trying to reach Van Nuys Airport for work. Matasaranu shot Marr, causing him to escape on foot. Marr sought refuge in the home of 69-year-old Dora Lubjenski, who mistook him for an intruder and called the police, leading to a brief suspicion that Marr might be a third accomplice. Meanwhile, Matasarianu took a Bushmaster XM-15 E2S rifle from the Chevrolet's trunk as police converged on him. He attempted to flee in Marr's Jeep, which was left with keys, but was immobilized due to a kill switch and was manual transmission, with which Matasarianu was unfamiliar. Eventually, a SWAT team arrived and engaged Matasarianu, targeting his unprotected legs and hitting him 29 times. Matasarianu collapsed and surrendered, taunting the officers to kill him and identifying himself as Pete. He succumbed to his injuries from severe blood loss caused by two wounds in his left thigh by 10.01 a.m. before an ambulance could arrive, nearly 70 minutes later. In the aftermath of the North Hollywood shootout, LAPD officers conducted extensive searches in local neighborhoods for any more gunmen advising residents through public broadcasts to remain indoors for safety. The incident led to significant changes in law enforcement armament across the United States. Police officers were authorized to carry more powerful semi-automatic pistols and AR-15 rifles, with 600 surplus AR-15s distributed to the LAPD. In response to the substantial damage inflicted on LAPD cruisers, new vehicles were equipped with bullet-resistant Kevlar plating. The following year, 19 officers who participated in the shootout, including those injured by Phillips and Matasarianu, were awarded the Los Angeles Police Medal of Valor for their bravery. They were also honored by then-President Bill Clinton. The circumstances surrounding Matasarianu's death led to significant controversy regarding the LAPD's actions. The police were criticized for not allowing immediate medical aid justifying their decision by stating that ambulance crews typically avoid entering active danger zones, especially when the perpetrators are deemed highly dangerous, or there's a risk of an ambush by an additional assailant. However, this rationale was challenged by live aerial footage showing Matasarianu lying disarmed on the ground for around an hour before the arrival of medical help, coupled with the absence of any third gunman. Matasarianu's family filed a lawsuit against the LAPD, accusing them of deliberately letting him die from his wounds. The case, heard in the United States District Court in early 2000, resulted in a hung jury and a mistrial, eventually leading to its dismissal following an agreement with the Matasarianu family. A 2017 investigation by the Los Angeles Times attributed Matasarianu's prolonged death to various errors and delays primarily by the paramedics. This incident remains as one of the most violent and significant shootouts in American history. In the span of 44 minutes, around 2,000 bullets were exchanged, resulting in injuries to 12 police officers and eight civilians, while also causing significant damage and destruction to several vehicles and properties. Miraculously, and most importantly, this shootout did not result in any loss of life a fact that stands as a testament to the quick response and bravery of law enforcement officers who risked everything to protect the public. Let us remember this event not only for its violence, but also for the resilience and courage shown in the face of danger. Thank you for watching.